this year Bali had an opening in April at the Museum of Old Maps and Old Books uh, with five of the beautiful uh, maps, thematical maps. Three of them are still here. It's um, the, the, the Romanian wine uh, map and the Danube Delta one and the history of horses around the world. They are done in different uh, in uh, different techniques. Two so of them are tempera with egg, and this is uh, watercolor on uh, on ink. Um, you can touch them a little bit uh, and look at them to see the difference uh, when you have time. And then the rest are um, some prints of uh, maps Bali produced also for the last exhibition and also an order from, from people. She's an artist who likes to talk with people and create something on a custom base, which is very rare because sometimes artists don't like to do this, but she's the type of artist who loves to create something according to the needs of the client, which I love. So that's why I made this small print and I put a little bit of history and for some of them I even had some pictures of how they look in their new homes. So please take some time. Uh, for some of them uh, there are a bit of history of um, all the information body gathered in order to, to paint the maps. And it's a really beautiful uh, lesson of history, for example, for the sales uh, map, for the coffee history. So take your time, enjoy it, drink some wine. And the wine, and this wine is here somewhere. Where is this one? Come just for a second because he used to leave so he escaped from, um, from, from the speech. So Razvan is the marketing director of uh, Gramele Rekash Wine. It's a Romanian... Um, big brand <laughs> and, uh, and they decided to hire an artist to design their labels and Bali was uh, the chosen artist and this is the, the label she designed and there are a few sketches here and uh, on that wall with uh, some of the drawings she, she made for uh, this presentation. Uh, thank you all for coming today. It's always a pleasure for me when I am asked to speak because I'm a professor of art history, and uh, most of the people I talk about, or the artists I talk about, are very, very dead. They've been dead for a very <laughs> long time. So um, uh, when I look at a work of art, I will say, who did this? OK, why did they do it? When did they do it? What were they thinking? And I have to make a lot of um, educated guesses. I mean, of course, there is um, documentation. There are uh, people who wrote about other artists. but it's always a second-hand experience. Um, the joy of working um, uh, in Romania is that I have been blessed to meet artists and to talk with them about their art and to find out what were you thinking, what were you doing, how did you do that, what were you um, expecting, etc. So it is always a pleasure to um, speak. And it was a great pleasure to discuss with Bali for art because um, I think if anybody has been more than five minutes, you've heard Vali laugh. And uh, <laughs> she has such a, a boisterous, joyful laugh. And I think that is important in her art. You can see it. And um, the title of today's um, exhibit is Visual Histories Around the World. It has several words in it that are um, very important. One, visual. Obviously, you've come to look and admire um, and to see. Uh, the other one is history. And um, uh, to know the story, to know what what is that? Um, how did it happen? Um, uh, what was the progression? And those are the two things I enjoy very much, visual and history. And she's combined them all for me very, very nicely. Um, and for me, I like to put everything in my mind in order. So I have to know hmm, um, what was the origin, um, what sparked it, uh, how did that happen, and I try to make a map in my mind of the progression. And Valley actually drew the maps. So, um, uh, and she she said that she was often thinking, oh, um, she had a particular idea, a particular subject, and she would begin to research it. And then um, sometimes it was a client who asked her, sometimes it was something that just sparked her interest. Um, and then uh, once she began to research it, several weeks, several, sometimes months, um, and then she began to lay out a plan in her mind. Um, and uh, that is why it's such a pleasure and delight to look at them visually, because for me, it's a manifestation of the way my mind works. Um, and I did enjoy speaking with Valley. 
Um, she's an artist that brings great joy and curiosity to her art and to the world in general. Um, and we began to chat about um, her painting, what her, her spark was, um, what pushed her, and um, uh, it was quite fascinating and quite um, different because um, uh, Valley grew up um, in a small town in Valle Popi. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> and her dad was the mayor. Um, and she grew up thinking that she wanted to be a writer uh, because she liked to write and then she would make um, pictures next to the writing. Uh, she didn't think there were people who lived off making pots. She didn't know this was a viable job, actually. Um, and then she came to Bucharest when she was about 15, and she found out, actually, this is a real job. She could actually be an artist. And so she went back home and she told her dad, I'm going to be an artist. And I said, what? She said, how? You can't paint. Uh, how do you, how, you have to show me. And she said, okay, tell me how I can show you. And he had a calendar. They had a calendar and it had a Madonna and Child, which is an iconic image. And he said, paint this. She said, I don't have a brush. How can I paint? He said, no problem. I fix that too. And he made brushes out of her hair, his hair, and pig's hair. And he made her brushes and she painted. And it was a success. And he said, excellent, you can be an artist. And then they decided she's going to be an artist. And she is the only artist I've ever spoken to who is um, someone who trained as an apprentice. She didn't go to um, an Ecole de Beaux-Arts, which is you know, a proper, uh, what do you call it, like, you go to university to study that. Um, she studied the traditional way most artists throughout all time have studied. She studied with a master. And she trained in his atelier, and she was blessed, she says that, because she was surrounded by artists. And it wasn't just someone who painted, it was also um, graphic artists, um, sculptors, um, working in different media. And uh, she was very curious, very eager to learn. And um, one of the things was that she didn't like formal classes because she was always asking questions. How do you do this? What's that? How? And there, she would go into their office or into their studio, and um, they say, Valley, go get me a pack of cigarettes, and I'll show you how to prime that canvas. Valley, go run this errand. And, and she did, and she loved it. And they said, okay, you, pre pre you prepare this one for me, and I'll let you use another one to do such and such. And so she learned many different techniques. Um, you know, whether that is oil painting, working with egg and tempera, whether it is um, uh, pen and ink, um, sculpting. She worked with all different types of media. And this uh, really uh, gave her an amazing education. Um, plus, it sparked her curiosity. <coughs> keep on looking, keep on learning, keep on trying, keep on um, experimenting new things. I mean, at 18, uh, she told me she worked um, uh, for an icon artist. She learned how to make traditional Romanian icons. Um, at 20, she worked in a gallery uh, uh, and painted in the Dutch style of the 17th and 18th century. And at 22, she had her own studio um, where she was an artist. She was you know, living her dream, um, and is still just as excited about it today as she was at 22. And she said she's um, painted postcards um, in order to pay the rent. And um, that it was an excellent education because she had to do quite precise work. It was sometimes repetitive, but it was also very um, uh, labor intensive and it gave her good uh, work discipline as well as good technique. Um, and then she also worked on restorations in um, churches and frescoes. That's a completely different one. You know. So she did the gamut. And honestly, she did it all, and in all of what she was explaining to me, she was um, always interested in the technique. She had some subjects she adored, like horses, you can see it there. Um, as she said, she loved dancing. She was very interested in um, uh, lots of different subjects, but um, the technique was what was constantly stimulating to her and was constantly um, challenging her. And she wanted to try new things and she wanted to try different ways of composing and um, creating images. So um, it brings us to the maps. Um, uh, she said, as I mentioned, sometimes I think of an idea and sometimes um, it's her own um, uh, passion. And she's very interested in knowledge and she wants to paint it and learn and try, and she wants to challenge herself this way, visually. 
it does take months to prepare these maps because not only is it um, researching the idea, stretching the leather, the leather itself is very particular because she wants to choose the right color for the composition, the right um, green of the leather. Um, she mentioned seeing the pores or the, um, you know, sometimes uh, it has this very smooth texture, sometimes it has a much more rough and it gives contour to the image and, and the Danube Delta map, you really do get a sense of the feel of the texture of the leather as well. Plus the color of the leather comes through and she wants that to come through in the uh, maps themselves. And um, as she researched, she also began to wonder, and not only wonder, but discover how much um, and how productive Romanians have been um, in many different areas. Um, and that was something that was quite a passion for her as well. So as uh, when I mentioned, there was a history of sailing, and there's some prints of those, history of coffee, but then here we have the history of wine in Romania. This is a Romanian example, and the different types of wine uh, that were indigenous to Romania. Um, and she added a little um, image on the bottom right of Sifon, Svante Sifon, because um, there was um, an emphasis of a particular bug that came and started eating the grapes. They were destroying the indigenous grapes to Romania. And so people would pray to the saint in order to save the grapes. And, um, uh, and when she made, uh, she was asked to um, uh, make the labels for this uh, wine company, um, she was inspired by a Renaissance artist called Giuseppe Acciambaldo. And he would um, make portraits out of um, things that were relevant to that person. So it was inanimate objects, um, flowers, plants, books, and make an entire figure out of um, uh, these objects that related to that person. And so, um, well, like I said, well, how did you uh, make the label? She said, well, I tried the wine. And then the wine told me, it said it looked like a woman that was made out of floral and had this particular um, uh, you know, color to her, and this particular feel. And so you can see that the imagination was spurred on her subject. Um, and also, when we look at um, the horses around the world, um, she said she loves horses and that she had they had horses and um, she loves to paint them. And then when she started researching the horses, there are over 300 breeds of horses. Um, and it was impossible to make a map of all of them, so she just chose her favorites. But she also chose to um, paint them in, and Vale does paint in a very old master style, very um, you know, uh, detailed, very um, animated, and very natural and realistic. And she um, put two images at the top of the bottom. Uh, at the top is a Renaissance school, it's a um, Vienna uh, image, and it's horses as man has taken uh, control and you know very ordered um with a rider on it um very disciplined um and she believes the horses love people and that people love horses and they like to be ridden but also she included on the bottom wild horses and just the sheer run and exhilaration of galloping across um, a field and she chose a leather that brought those warm earth tones out and her whole palette has very much a, uh, um, a, a saddle kind of um, motif to it, and you can feel the um, the passion for the subject matter when you look at these paintings. Um, she also did um, uh, a history of cars, and she said you know, it was just so immense the subject she had to kind of limit it, but she was still obsessed after she finished the maps with the cars, and she was painting cars still. And this is a Lada, um, which I believe many in Romania might have ridden in or driven in for a long time. Um, and the way she makes these is um, uh, it's very difficult. It's inspired by a technique of Leonardo da Vinci. Painting on leather is not. Um, uh, the most um, simple uh, technique or medium to use. Um, it's a combination, sometimes, as in this one, watercolor, um, pen and ink on leather, but these are egg um, uh, and tempera on a leather, and it always requires a varnish at the end, so it's very laborious, but it's, it's scientific, and it's also, that's part of the process, is how to create these, that's part of the excitement for them. And then, of course, there's the Danube Delta um, map, where the blues and the greens, and she picked out the most important birds and the most important fish and some of the iconic um, flora and fauna of um, the Delta. Um, and then, in the hallway, we have some symbols of the Zodiac. And you can see that her 
subject matter varies greatly from wine to horses, zodiac, uh, coffee, sailing, um, so on and so forth. And this is part of her passion. It's part of her um, zeal for life and her joy of transmitting her thirst for knowledge and her quest for things. And chess, there's also the images in the front. And what I like about the, um, the images of the chess is it shows you also her process. Um, the map of chess has been, is not no longer real, but there's a print. But she has the sketches from when she was designing and thinking about her chess uh, map. And they are so vibrant and so vivacious and so um, animated. Um, uh, and they give you a way to see how an artist creates and how they um, uh, slowly begin to um, create a composition. So, in conclusion, you can see that Valley's immense and insatiable curiosity about the world around her and her subjects and her techniques um, in her medium, um, that she transmits that uh, excitement to her viewer. And um, because of this, you can imagine, she loves children, she loves teaching young children. Um, their uh, ages range from three to 55, so that's quite a, a big uh, uh, range. But it's all about, um, because she was an apprentice, and she had this thirst, and she had this curiosity, and as her art, spreads that she also wants to communicate it and pass it on just as she was given the gift of people sharing their knowledge with her she wants to share her knowledge visually and also practically and i think it is um, such a joy um, to uh, to look at her paintings and to really begin to question and appreciate them so i hope you enjoy this